In this video, we are going to discuss how to use task class to run our code asynchronously. Now in C we have this task class available and it represents an asynchronous operation. So what does it mean? Well, basically the task operation can be executed asynchronously on a thread pool thread rather than synchronously on the main thread of the application, meaning that we can perform some code while not blocking the main thread to the execution of our game. Now, why would we use the task library over the job system in Unity? Well, one reason can be that to execute a job, we need to pass all our data to a native array and it doesn't allow us to refactor our current code into a unsynchronous code. Instead, it expects us to modify our whole structure. So this is the only reason why I'm using the task class instead of the job system, because the job system doesn't allow me easily to refactor or reuse our current code. That said, we do have the block types as an enum, so you can try using the Unity job uh, system to create jobs instead of the tasks. Now, back to the tasks. Well, to use our task class, we need to also use async and await keywords in the C-sharp language. So the idea is that when we are performing this method, executing it, we are going to reach this await keyword and our method will simply stop here. And we are not going to see the eggs are ready console right line until this method returns its value calculates whatever it is calculating and returns its value but when it is doing so when it is waiting for the, the task or the method after wait cure to finish the remaining parts of our software will be executed so we are going to basically return from this method we are going to do anything else that we need to do and when it, this method returns the result, we're going to continue executing the rest of the content of this method. Okay, if you want to learn more, I have a specific video about the async await keywords and how to create tasks and how to use them in Unity. The link should appear in the top right corner of Unity. But I think the best way to show you what is going on here and how we can use the task library is to actually code it into our project. So let's go back to Unity. Okay, so before we start working on implementation of the task class into our code, let's go to our world and let's reduce the drawing distance, drawing uh, chunk drawing range to, for example, two, so we will be able to quite easily load or uh, play the game instead of waiting a long time for the result, because we are going to test the result of our code. Okay, let's open our world script. Okay. And... Here we are going to slide down where we have this generate world method that is called from our button click. Now you don't have to type this code that I will type, but you can if you want to test it on your own. Let me comment out this generate world call to the method that takes the vector 3 int parameter. And instead I will call async test. This will be a new method that we are going to generate. So right click, quick actions and generate it. It should be generated below. And let's, after this, let's debug.log. And we are going to debug.log. Press like on this video. So go on, press like on this video. And what, uh, where would it be called this? Uh, press like on this video. Let's call it in this async test debug.log. And then we are going to output doing async work. Okay. So. Obviously, the async, doing async work would be printed before the press like on this video. So let's test it. Make sure that you save the script. Okay, Unity is running, so I'm going to press regenerate. And as you can see, doing async work, press like on this video. It works like we would expect it to work. Let's go back to our script. Great. So now let's go to our async test. And we are going to change the definition of this method as as async. So this keyword needs to be added in the definition of this method so that we can now perform some uh, task operations or the operation on the uh, separate thread. So as you can see, we have this green squiggly line. It informs us that we do not have the await operator anywhere. Since to wait for the asynchronous task, we need to have the await operator. So instead of debug.log, we are going to put here int value equals, and we are going to call await test. Task. 
and this will be our method. So now let's right click on this method and quick actions and we are going to have this generate method. Now a couple of things has happened. We have generated this method which has the definition that returns the task with the int parameter uh, type. And at the top, we have imported this using system.threading.task library, which contains this task class. Now, we are going to await for this, and this would return us the task instance, so the instance of the class that allows us to do asynchronous work. Now, we can return a task and perform the task here. So basically, if we return a task, we are not going to wait for it until we call the await method. But we are going to also pass here the async keyword to this task, test task method. And this is because I want to create this to simulate some sort of a work that we would do. So basically, we are going to await, and we have this task dot delay, which simply creates a delay, which simply makes some type of action that will take two seconds. So, so let's type. 2000 milliseconds so this will be two seconds and we are going to basically wait for two seconds and this will simulate the work that we would do on a separate thread now after those two seconds we are going to return and we are going to call task and to run any logic on a separate thread we are going to call run and we are going to add parentheses so this now takes the action so action is the delegate that represents the work, so we could create a method that we would pass here. But we are going to use lambda expression, so uh, parenthesis, this will be the input, uh, equals, question, uh, equals greater sign, so this will be the lambda expression. And we are going to basically create an anonymous method that will represent what we want to do in this task. And what we want to do is we want to return an int value, because we have defined the type task with the int type. So we need to return in this run int. As you can see, you cannot implicitly convert system threading task to integer. So we want to return, let's return 10, for example. And we need to, of course, add a wait. Okay, so now our task will return value 10 after two seconds. And we are going to await for this value in the async test method. Now, if it sounds complicated, the basic idea is this async allows us to await for the result of this task test. So this will take two seconds, and after two seconds, the code here later on will be uh, executed. But before it uh, is, this test task needs to finish its own work. So let's debug dot log, and we are going to log here, uh, maybe finished generation okay so this will wait for the result of the test task which will take two seconds and after this time it will return the finished generation now to show you that this actually runs on a separate thread we are going to create a coroutine so we are going to paste in the async async test we are going to start a coroutine and we are going to call this async coroutine i'm going to uh, right click on this quick action and generate it but this will not generate the correct definition so async coroutine will be an i enumerator okay async coroutine and what we are going to do here is yield return new wait for seconds we are going to wait for 0 0.5 second and we are going to debug dot log and what we are going to do here is debug a link game so this will simulate that we are actually doing something in, uh, inside our world and we're going to add time dot time to just show you that the time is actually flowing so the update is being called and the time is updated and that we are actually able to run the code while we are waiting for the task uh, test task to return its value okay so with this simple setup with this generate world assigned to our button that calls async test and this is called not asynchronously. So this will finish as soon as we call this await. And this debug.log statement now will actually be called before everything else. The so one more thing is let's restart this coroutine. So start coroutine. Actually, you can call the same line from the async test. Then we want to restart this coroutine. 
as long as this task is running. When this task returns the value, we are going to call stop all coroutines to stop this coroutine, and we are going to debug.log finish generation. So basically what we are doing is calling from our button async test, and now we are going to async test, starting the coroutine and awaiting this test task return value. After it returns the value, we are going to stop all coroutines, debug uh, finished generation. And while the coroutine is running, we are going to wait for 0.5 seconds before we uh, debug playing game with the time dot time, so the current time from the beginning of the game. And we are going to restart this coroutine. Okay, and last thing is when we return this value, we want to debug dot log and let's call the task returned. And we are going to add the value. Okay, so again, we are starting from this generate world. We are calling this async test. The async test is starting the coroutine and the, it is awaiting the test, test task to return the value. Now, question for you is where do you think this debug.log press like on this video will appear? Let's save this code and let's go back to Unity. Okay, great. Let me press play and we are going to press the regenerate button. Okay, what is going on here? Press like on this video was actually outputted uh, at the start. So our task indeed is being awaited only in the context of this async test method. And this async test method returned to the generate world context and it outputted this debug.log statement while it is itself waiting for the chance to output the rest of its code when the task finishes its work. Okay, uh, the next thing is that the playing game coroutine was uh, outputting the time, and as you can see, the roughly the difference is 0.5 second, and it outputted five times this, so we indeed waited for two seconds before we have returned task returned 10. So we have received the value, the output in the value from our test task. It was 10 and it, we, it, we have outputted this. We have stopped all coroutine and at the end we have debugged finished generation. So again, if you press play and if you restart this whole thing, we're going to see that we can move our mouse, move our editor, move our inspector and it is all happening outside of the main thread. So we are free to do whatever we want in our game. And this is the idea behind the asynchronous operations. Now, this is a very simplistic example, so it doesn't really explain why I have chosen the task library or task class rather over the Unity job system. Well, I will show you in the next video how easy it will be to refactor this code into a, an async operations. Okay, thanks again to all the patrons who are supporting me in making those tutorials. Again, in the next video, we are going to refactor this generate world code or part of it to run asynchronously. See you in the next video.